I've now worked with dozens of clients who have decided to get started with Copilot for Microsoft 365 since it became available to all businesses. And while every day I see good evidence to bolster the accuracy of Microsoft's claims that Copilot Power users can save more than a day of time every month, I also see people who are disillusioned and frustrated because they cannot successfully get Copilot to do that niche thing they are looking for. The difference between the delighted and disillusioned is a small one. And in my experience, it fundamentally comes down to how you are using Copilot. Some people are just using it plain wrong and then blaming the product. So in this video, let's talk through three of the main Copilot usage errors I see that are making users frustrated and how to fix them. And stick around until the end where we will focus on the steps you can take in your business to ensure Copilot gets used to its maximum from the start. Do note that as always, any screen recordings you see in this video are captured using demo environments. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. One of the key errors I have seen is when people are using Copilot, but just ignoring its grounding capabilities. Copilot for Microsoft 365 is an amazing tool, but it's also very different to other generative AI experiences like ChatGPT in that it sits on top of and can leverage much of your Microsoft 365 data. This is an amazing superpower because so much of what we do in work day to day isn't original and out of nowhere. It's built upon foundations of other work you've done before, whether that's the history of a project or a meeting you conducted with a client or a template for a document that you've already built. When we mix that existing data context with your request or prompt, we call that grounding. And Copilot for Microsoft 365 is a grounding beast in comparison to many other generative AI tools. Copilot not only works best when it's interacting with your business data, but I would argue that it's the only use case under which it actually makes sense. In fairly objective ways, I find other services like ChatGPT or Claude to give better results when I'm not worried about leveraging existing contextual content. And so it surprises me that many users make little attempt to fully realize the potential of Copilot's business data grounding skills. Microsoft doesn't help this situation by literally making every Copilot enabled product slightly different when it comes to grounding capabilities. Just take a look at Outlook. There are three different Copilot buttons on screen, and each of them will access a slightly different Copilot experience, each with different abilities when it comes to leveraging existing content to help you in your tasks. This is fundamentally confusing, and while it is becoming more fixed over time, it must be something Microsoft gets better at with this product. But beyond that confusing foundation, some users also don't help themselves. First, if the data you need for grounding isn't accessible to you in Microsoft 365, then Copilot isn't going to be helpful. You need to store content in OneDrive or SharePoint, you need to record or transcribe Teams meetings, and you need to ensure your process is digitized so the pieces of it are in Copilot's view. There are ways around this with extensibility in the long term, but foundationally, if you store all your files on your company's on-premises share drive, or you use an obscure email provider, your investment in Copilot for Microsoft 365 is going to be far harder to justify with the quality of outputs you get. Assuming you've done your data preparation and relevant grounding content is available to Copilot, you still need to use it. I've seen users who insist on finding the exact text they want from a file and pasting it into Copilot in much the same way they've got used to with ChatGPT. And while sometimes you do want to be that certain of the context an AI request you're making is using, a lot of the time this will be a redundant process that simply means you miss much of the benefit Copilot can deliver to you. You shouldn't blindly trust Copilot or any AI tool but you should make use of the capabilities it was designed with while ensuring you verify its outputs to a reasonable degree to ensure responsible usage. 
for many frustrated users getting a full picture of these grounding capabilities and getting in the habit of storing or creating data so they can be used is the tipping point at which Copilot goes from a frustration to a powerful and helpful tool being used effectively every day. Before we look at error number two, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like to help it get in front of more people. And if you're interested in seeing more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. The next issue I see often is that Copilot users only use basic prompts, but get frustrated that all they get back are fairly basic results. While this varies across the Copilot product suite, if you look at the prompt input boxes for Copilot in apps like Word or in Copilot Chat, you'll see you can include up to 2,000 characters. This is the equivalent of five or six good length paragraphs and should give you some indication of how complex a prompt can be. And while you can certainly get things done with just a few words, you might think about prompting a bit like being back in school and your teacher telling you to answer a question on a paper in no more than 500 words. They may just say no more than 500, but you're probably not going to get an A if all you write is 50. Microsoft has some good resources on how to prompt effectively, but I have to say that it's prompt suggestions and even those that are part of Copilot Lab are fairly basic. They are generic starters, not all powerful wranglers of AI's ultimate power. Let's look at the other end of the scale. The open source Fabric project created by Daniel Meisler seeks to help humans get more done with AI by crowdsourcing effective prompts, or in the terms used by the project, patterns. If this is of interest to you, then please do go check it out. There's a link down below. And let me know in the comments if you'd like me to explore this further in another video. The reason I highlight this is we can look at one of these patterns. The extract wisdom pattern is a prompt designed to extract information from content. And forgetting about the exact detail here, you can see the complexity and focus of this prompt. It is highly specific and refined and therefore achieves a highly specific and refined response. Whether you use it through Fabric on the command line or by pasting it into Copilot, you get similarly sophisticated results. But the fact is that most users are prompting more like what we see in Copilot Lab than what we see in Fabric, and generic prompts generally end up with fairly bland answers. And when users end up with generic responses, they tend to blame Copilot and not their prompt. We should think of prompting similarly to interactions we might have with colleagues on getting work done. Sometimes brevity is ideal, but other times, if what you're looking for is highly specific, you have to think a lot harder about how to communicate those needs so they're understood. Generative AI can do many things, but just like your human assistant, it's not a mind reader. So you have to give it the information it needs to understand what you want to get done. Our last issue to talk about is deeply connected with prompt quality, and that's failing to iterate. If you have an assistant working with you and you give him the same instruction, slightly altered, again and again to get certain work done, you will give off a lot of micromanager vibes. But Copilot doesn't care. It's happy to try the same thing over and over until you get the result you want. This is a different way of thinking about instructions at work. I just showed you a complex and detailed prompt from the Fabric project, but the expectation isn't that you build something like this in one shot. Effective prompts are the product of experimentation and iteration, where you might try the same task several times before you hit on the right solution. And at that point, you should hold on to that prompt to use next time you need to get that type of work done. This process of iteration is absolutely fundamental to getting the best from Copilot or other AI tools in a way that really doesn't apply to most other systems you're implementing your business. Because Copilot and all generative AI isn't deterministic, it's difficult to simply describe a series of actions like button presses and expect consistent results. But by iterating your prompting over a series of trial and error steps, you can get better and more consistent results that are more directly tailored to exactly what you need. And even if not iterating exactly, taking your AI help tasks from trying to one-shot everything to having a dialogue with Copilot in order to help it improve can be a very useful technique, especially for things you haven't tried before. 
This is a different way of thinking about how to communicate your requirements in a business context. So that leads us on to one final topic. How do you navigate the process of embracing Copilot for Microsoft 365 while avoiding your team members falling into these and other traps that make them disillusioned in the first place? This all comes down, in my experience, to having a planned adoption process that includes getting all the technical requirements in place, including considerations of your data preparation, and ensuring your team members or those in supervisory roles are supported in learning not just how Copilot for Microsoft 365 works, but also more fundamentally how using generative AI in business is different than embracing many other technologies. Microsoft has a fantastic set of adoption resources available at its website specifically for Copilot, and I'll put a link down below to a recent video I published on Copilot for Microsoft 365 adoption. However, if you're looking for help with this, also remember that I offer a whole range of consulting services on Copilot, including my new Copilot for Microsoft 365 adoption package, which is a fixed price set of consulting and training services aimed at small and medium sized businesses starting their Copilot journey. Links to find out more are down below. Foundationally, I cannot overstate how important the process of skills development for Copilot is to helping your users find the benefit in these tools. There are differences between them and you need to know what each of them do, but you also need to focus on embracing the habit of using them. Microsoft's recent Work Trend Index report showed us the power users of Copilot, those saving 10 or more hours per month using it, are significantly more likely to have received training from their business and seen their leadership embrace the benefits of AI. Implementing the technology is just one part of success. The larger part is making Copilot or similar tools part of the work culture of your business. What do you think about the three errors I highlighted in this video? Are there others you think are more important to address? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.